All right. These are words that I totally fuck to. Then the sheriff said, where does this go to? Meaning another door there in the basement. Sheriff led the way, but inside you couldn't see your hand until Mr. Ewalt found the light switch. It was a furnace room and very warm. Around here, people just install a gas furnace and pump the gas smack out of the ground. Doesn't cost them a nickel. That's why all the houses are overheated. Well, I took one look at Mr. Clutter and it was hard to look again. I knew plain shooting couldn't account for that much blood and I wasn't wrong. He'd been shot all right, the same as Kenyon, with the gun held right in front of his face, but probably he was dead before he was shot or anyway, dying because his throat had been cut too. He was wearing striped pajamas, nothing else. His mouth was taped. The tape had been wound plumb around his head. His ankles were tied together, but not his hands, or rather he'd managed, God knows how, maybe in a rage or pain to break the cord binding his hands. He was sprawled in front of the furnace on a big cardboard box that looked as though it had been laid there specially, a mattress box. Sheriff said, look here, Wendell. What he was pointing at was a blood-stained footprint on the mattress box, a half-sole footprint with circles, two holes in the center, like a pair of eyes. Then one of us, Mr. Ewalt, I don't recall, pointed out something else, a thing I can't get out of my mind. There was a steam pipe overhead and nodded to it, dangling from it, was a piece of cord, the kind of cord the killer had used. Obviously, at some point, Mr. Clutter had been tied there, strung up by his hands, and then cut down. But why? To torture him? I don't guess we'll ever know. Ever know who did it, or why, or what went on in that house that night.